Folks, I had a little technical difficulty uh, this morning. I uh, thought I was live. I was watching myself. And my wife came and got me and said, uh, no one is seeing the broadcast, so I apologize. And I want to wish everyone this morning happy Mother's Day. So if you're out there this morning and you're a mother, happy Mother's Day to you. And uh, if you're a mother in the Lord, happy Mother's Day to you in the Lord. So we're going to look today at the judgment of the world. That's one of the topics that we're going to look at in this broadcast is the very judgment of the world. And just to catch our minds back up to last week, in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus, speaking of Jesus, verse 20 says, A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment to victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles hope. So, there's a judgment, according to this scripture, to victory. Now, I may not fully comprehend what that means, but I should be seeking to understand what is the judgment to victory. Really, what is that? In John chapter 12 and verse 31, Jesus says, and I'll give you a moment if you're, if you're watching and you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 12. In verse 31, Jesus says, Now is the judgment of the world. Now, he said, Now is. That was 2,000 years ago and counting that he said, Now is the judgment of the world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abides Forever, and how sayest thou then, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So, now is the judgment of the world. Now, get a hold of what Jesus is saying. And, and in particular, I want you to fix your eyes and your heart on three things in this passage. And I, and I don't know if I'll get through... All three of them today, we will see. But we may touch all three of them, but I want you to fix your eyes upon the statement, Now is the judgment of the world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men or mankind unto me. And he was speaking of his death. That's what he says. So we made this a song. When I say we, most of the most of the believers in the church have made a song, lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher. And and I'm not against the song, so don't misunderstand me, but what what we thought that was, you know, we, we read scriptures and sometimes we just read a scripture and we don't read the context of scripture. If I lift Jesus higher, I'll draw all men. Well, he already drew all men to himself. This is what he said. If I'm lifted up on the cross, I'm going to draw mankind to myself in my flesh. And Apostle Paul fully understood this in his epistles that he wrote that Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection, he dealt with mankind, with the whole of humanity. There's nothing out in humanity that he did not deal with. So at the cross, he drew mankind to himself. So, so what you have to ask, what did he draw it from? Now, this, 
what what where was man before he drew it to himself? What well, man was was lost in sin. Man was under the law. You could say a lot of things, but he drew it to himself, and he says, "Now is the judgment of the world." Apostle Paul writes in Galatians six. Flip over to Galatians chapter six and start at verse thirteen. And Paul's dealing with the Galatian church, how that many have come among them and they are teaching circumcision. In fact, they're trying to take a people back under the Mosaic law. And and I say this wholeheartedly, the law was holy and just, but Christ is the fulfillment of the law. He fulfilled the law. He was what is spoke of. So, in verse 13, Paul writes to the Galatians, chapter 6, For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me. See, this is a judgment right here, folks. The world is crucified to me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, or a new creation. So, the world, Paul says, the world, get a hold of that. The world is crucified to me, Paul writes. And I am crucified to the world. When I hear that inside, what, what I hear is the authority, the world has no authority over me. None. Zero. I'm crucified to it. Dead to it. So its authority to me is not there. Now, now the word world is a word in the Greek that, that is cosmos, the word world here, and I went through these in one of my uh, teachings last week. But the word world here being used is the word cosmos, and it's the same word Jesus says that now is the judgment of the world. So the cosmos means the orderly arrangement. So the arrangement of this world is being judged at the cross. That's what Jesus is dealing with. He's going to the cross and He says... Now is the judgment of the world. Now shall the prince of the world be cast out. And if I'm lifted up at the cross, I'm going to draw all judgment or all mankind to myself. And that's what he did. And he judged the world and he put it to death. Hallelujah. In order to bring those that receive him forth in his life. See, see, folks, we have His life in us if we have received Him. But we're also made partakers of His death, and the power of His death has to be worked in our hearts. And the Lord just bears in me the power of His death. And, and Apostle Paul declares, he says, he says in this chapter 6, he says, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. So God was pressing Paul into comprehending Christ in his death. And, he, and, he, and if you read Paul's writings, it's so evident because Paul deals with the death of the cross over and over and over again. And in that death is a judgment that you and I as believers come into through Christ's judgment to the world. So, so the world had that arrangement of sin and death had dominion over man. The arrangement of the Mosaic covenant had dominion over man. The arrangement even of Satan had H-A-D Dominion over man. But now, Jesus said, I am going to judge it. And now the prince of this world shall be cast out. And Paul says that I am crucified to the world. 
Most Christians don't understand that. Most Christians do not understand that they were crucified with Christ, that they were buried with Christ, and that they have been raised together as one with Him. And, and that is the gospel. That's good news. Because in that good news, the dominion of the world has no more claim on me who is he, who am now his. And Apostle Paul, understand that, says we are hid with Christ in God. Where are we hid from? We're hid from the powers of the world. We're hid from the powers of the enemy. We, we are joined to Him to minister Him to the earth. Turn to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. And I'm reading out the Berean, I believe literal standard, or the Berean Study Bible, one of the Berean translations. But 2 Corinthians 5, verse 13. And the Apostle Paul writes, If we are out of our mind, it is for God. If we are of a sound mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all. Therefore, all died. And He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and was raised again. I wrote this note down. All became dead to that arrangement. To live unto God in Christ. This judgment is through His judgment at the cross. So this judgment comes into our heart that we were made dead to the arrangement of the world in order to live unto God in Christ. That's what we're released from the world to do. We're not released from the world to live our own lives. That's, that's unfortunately what many of us when we come and, and begin to realize the grace of the Lord Jesus and, and that, the, that the penalties of, of sin is no longer accounted to us, that it was laid upon Him, many of us will begin to think we have our own lives. But our life, who is Christ, is unto God. So, so our life is gathered up in His life. That we would live unto God in the earth. That's why the judgment come upon the world, that we would not be bound to the world, but we would become bound unto Christ. That's what God is after, is a people that are bound to Himself. A people that are bound to God in Christ. That's... That's exactly what He's after. And you and I, through the cross, as we have received Him, we come to this judgment in our heart as we see and understand and know the Lord. This judgment is made real in our heart that we no longer live unto ourselves, but we live to Him who died and was raised again. We live as His body. No longer the body of Adam, no longer under the dominion of the man of sin, no longer do we live there, no longer are we held there, because Jesus died for us, as us, and released us from that man. In Romans 6, the Bible reads, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? See, here's another judgment. 
Here's something that else that, that come in the judgment of the cross. We are dead to sin. And, and Paul's dealing with believers here and he says to them, he says, don't you understand, know you not, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Knowing that the body of sin, knowing that our old man is crucified, how do I know the old man is crucified? I can read this. In fact, I read this section of Scripture a lot. But how do I know what I read? He, the Lord Jesus, has to be made real in me, in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, in my inner man, my inner being. And there I must comprehend through Him, through the revealing of Him in me, that that old man is dead. I can read this and go out and say, well, my old man is dead. I've got to live unto God. And living unto God, and then I have all kinds of ideas of what that means, but living unto God is, is simply living as the body of Jesus Christ. No longer as the body of Adam, but as the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we live unto God. We live as His body. And He fills us with Himself. That's what Paul writes to the Ephesians in chapter 1. But let's stay on this train of thought for a moment. So we're crucified with Him. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Now, I just want to bring this to your attention, and in in the coming weeks we'll have to uh, peel this back a little bit further, or maybe later today we will see how this works. But the body of sin, the body of sin, does that simply mean your physical, natural bodies? Our physical, natural, we still have our physical, natural bodies. So the body of sin may have a greater meaning than just our physical, natural bodies. I believe if we, if we search this out, you will find that the body of sin is the embodiment of the man of sin, the man who fell in sin, that all mankind become the embodiment of that man, whether, whether they sinned in his likeness or, or not, as Paul wrote in Romans 5, they embodied that man in their mortal bodies, in their physical bodies. So we became the embodiment of Adam in the earth. So, so everyone was of the nature of Adam, everyone was of the seed of Adam, everyone was of the mind of Adam in the earth. That's, I believe, the body of sin. And this body of sin comes to its culmination in the law, because the law comes and shows sin to be exceedingly sinful, shows that the nature that is here, shows that the man that is here, is not what God is after. And what the law did was it didn't give a solution. So people under the law would come week after week, time after time, year after year, to the sacrifices that were required under the law, and there was no freedom of the conscience of sin. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians walk around without freedom of the conscience of sin. And, and that's what's so powerful of what Paul's writing here, know you not that you are dead to sin? So if I know I'm dead to sin, then I'm free from sin, and the conscience of sin can be destroyed because I'm free from sin to live under God. 
I'm not free from sin just to live unto myself. I'm free from sin, again, to live unto God. And I'm free here that the body of sin might be destroyed. And I see that picture in the Old Testament temple and tabernacle. They not only slayed the animal, when they brought the animal up there to the high priest, he didn't just slay the animal, he he burned it. It was consumed. It was put away. And it was speaking of this body of death that you and I were in Adam was put away in Christ. It was buried to be done away with in order to live unto God. Hallelujah. That I might find my life in Christ and not in this body of death, not in this man of sin, but my life would now be in the Lord Jesus Himself. He is my life. He is my hope. He is my glory. Glory to God. So, so coming on into Romans 7 briefly, he says, he says to the believer here, he says, Know ye not, for I speak to them that are under the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman hath a husband is bound to that law to her husband, so as long as he liveth, but if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. So then, but if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, so she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, you are become dead to the law, by the body of Christ. See, here's another judgment. Now it's the judgment of the world. You have become dead to the law by the body of Christ that we should be married in union. Because before we were in union with that man, and I dealt with it a while ago, and the motions of that man lived in our mortal bodies. But now that we are dead to that man, we are dead to that man that now what would live in our mortal bodies, what would be manifested out of us, would be the new man in Christ. Christ Jesus the Lord, who we're married to. Anyway, we, we see this glorious reality that we are married to Him to bring forth unto Him. That's what we're married to do, to bring forth unto the Lord the reality of God in Christ. So now we were married to Adam, now we are married to Christ, and that judgment has to fill our heart. I'm not married to the old man. I'm not in the old man. I'm dead to the old man through the offering of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how I'm dead. In John chapter 5, John chapter 5, let's see, verse 19, John 5 verse 19, then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, they... These also do the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed again, here's this, this committed all judgment to the Son. So all judgments committed to Christ. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honored the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Here's judgment. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Here's a judgment unto eternal life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. 
I, I could spend probably days on this comment right here that Jesus makes. Because as a young man, I was forever brought into condemnation. But Jesus says, if I hear His Word and believe on Him that sent me, I have eternal life or everlasting life, and I will not come into condemnation. Won't come there. But I passed from death under life. How many believers believe this? Many believers continually are coming into condemnation. In fact, as a young man, I was preached over and over to an altar. Do I have my sins covered? Am I really saved? I, I spent times with the Lord whom I had received, questioning Him if I was saved. I lived in fear, in bondage, not knowing that His work was enough. But the judgment He brings, if you receive Him, you've passed out of death, death that was in Adam, and you've come, Unto life. And life is in Christ. And when you see it that simple, that death was in the Adamic man, that I was born in sin in the Adamic man, and that I received the Lord Jesus in my heart, and through the receiving of Him, I am brought out of Adam, death, into life, who is Christ that I might know Christ, and I might know His glorious death, because in His glorious death, that's what Paul, Paul said to the Philippians, being made conformable to His death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. If I'm going to attain to what He is in the resurrection, I have to be made conformable to his death, and in his death I'm dead to sin. In his death I'm dead to the old man. In his death I'm dead to the law. Now is the judgment of the world. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw mankind to me. Hallelujah. So, so he drew us out of the world to himself and brought us into his death into His burial, and into His resurrection. And one last thing here in John 5, and we're going to move on, but just one last thing for it says, Jesus said, For the Father of life Himself, so have given the Son to have life in Himself. And He's given Him authority to execute judgment because He is the Son of Man. So it took Him as the Son of Man to execute judgment upon the world. And He did it at the cross. He executed it at the cross. Now, like I said, now is the judgment of the world. Now is my soul trouble. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And give me just a few more moments to deal with the prince of the world. Just, just a moment. I, I'll have to get into this in more depth here later. But the word prince is dealing with a ruler, preeminent ruler, chief. A commander with authority. And if I go back into Genesis, God gave the authority of the earth to Adam. I go back to Genesis 1, He gave him dominion and authority in the earth. So, He had dominion and authority, and Adam had the ability to name the animals and was set forth to tend the, the garden. You know, He had the authority, and what happened? Satan came in, and deceived Eve, and Adam chose to eat of that same deception. And authority, you know, what came in the earth at, was, was utter darkness come upon the earth. And in John 14.30, just Jesus says in John 14.30, says, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me. Matthew 4, 8 says, 
The devil taketh him up. This is when Jesus was taken out into the wilderness and was tempted of the devil. The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou fall down and worship me. And you know Jesus didn't fall down and worship the devil. In Luke 22, uh, now the Feast of Unleavened Bread called the Passover was approaching, Luke 22, 1. And the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered Judas... Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. And Judas went to discuss with the chief priests and the temple officers how he might betray Jesus to them. They were delighted and agreed to give him money, Judas considered, and began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus to them in the absence of the crowd. Then came the day of unleavened bread on the Passover, on which the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Jesus, or Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare for us to eat the Passover. So, so Judas betrayed Jesus. But this one piece here says the devil entered into his heart. And Jesus had said, hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and he has nothing in me. And so, so the desire of the enemy of, of the physical enemies, the enemies of the Jews, was to put Jesus to death. The desire of Satan was evidently to put him to death. And, and yet, they were playing right into Jesus' hands because he was getting ready to disrobe them of their authority and power. So, 1 Corinthians 2, Apostle Paul writes here, he says, How be it? We speak wisdom, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught or nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the His hidden wisdom, which God ordained before unto our glory. Remember what Paul said, he gloried in nothing save the cross. In another place, I believe he says the cross is the wisdom of God. So, so he says we're speaking the wisdom of God in a mystery. And in verse 8 here he says, Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they understood what they were doing, they wouldn't have crucified Him. Because in his crucifixion, he disrobed the devil of his authority in your life. <laughs> but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God." So now the Spirit's showing us what God prepared for us through Christ. What God shows in Christ before the foundation of the world, it is now being revealed by His Spirit. It had never entered into man's heart. In fact, man was in sin and death. And it never entered into his heart, but now, having received the Lord Jesus, it is made real in our hearts by the Spirit of God. And Jesus disrobed the enemy. He says that in Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2 says, and again I will put my trust in Him, Hebrews 2 verse 13, and again I will put my trust in Him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he took part of the same, speaking of Christ, that through death, through what? Through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. And deliver them. Not only did he destroy the devil through death, 
He delivered them who through fear of death, He delivered us through His death, who, were, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. He, he delivered us from death. The accuser of the brethren was cast down at the cross. The devil comes and says, hey, look what you've done. And Jesus can say, hey, I took all their sins upon me. If we hear that, He took our sins, He took our inabilities, He took our insecurities upon Himself and put it to death. And He presents us perfect in Himself. Complete in Himself. Because He is the perfect One. He is the complete One. And we are His body. So we're made complete in Him. And like I said, I'll have to go through this most likely again. Probably next week. But we'll see. So, give you this to chew on. You're, you're not under the power of the devil. You're not even under the authority of the law. You're not under the old man. You're not under sin. You're under Christ. Jesus says, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. That's what you're under. You're under His authority. You're under His domain. We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. It's time we understand His dominion and what that is, that we can minister His dominion to the earth. It's time we do that. It's, it's far past time that we continue to, to wrestle with things that He's delivered us of. But if I don't know I'm delivered of them, I will still wrestle with them. If I don't know I'm free from them, I'm still going to try to get free. But if I come into the revelation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, if I really begin to see that, I'll find freedom, I'll find victory, I'll find life, glory to God, and I'll be able to share life in the earth. His life. Because His life is my life. His life is your life. When Christ who is our life shall appear, we appear with Him as one with Him in glory. And this appearing, folks, I, I believe with all my heart, he, Paul's dealing with an inward appearing. Because in, in I believe in Colossians 1, he, he says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. And in Colossians 3, he's talking about Christ our life appearing and us appearing in glory. So Christ in you is the hope of it, and His revelation in us is the appearing of it. I believe we can say it that way. And when we begin to see this, honey, we see we're one with Him, and that is glorious. We see we are now His glorious body to manifest Him to the earth. Well, like I said, we'll have to go back through this, but the Lord bless you this morning. God bless you. Amen.